Okay, this is our 2014 Sport Touring Shafty Shootout. We've spent the last three days traveling to some iconic places in California, namely Yosemite, and then back, we're on our way home. We've done a lot of miles. Uh, we've got four bikes from four different manufacturers, two four cylinders, a triple, and an inline six. What we're missing today is a twin. Kevin, what happened to the twin we were supposed to have? Ah, uh, the BMW R1200 RT. We're so looking forward to throwing that in the shootout. And on the way to picking up the bike, BMW recalled the bike. We've got four great sport touring bikes. They kind of run a broad range, right? We've got something more simple like the Concours, and then we've got things like the K1600 GT and the Trophy with radios and They've all got uh, electric windshields, really comfy places to spend a lot of time in the saddle. If we had to do the trip again, I don't think we'd be sad if we were on uh, any of these bikes. Fantastic value for getting across the country, exploring, and getting yourself somewhere neat. What exactly is sport touring? Well, if you own a sport bike, sport touring is sewing some soft bags on your bike and going somewhere other than just your weekend ride. But the reality is sport touring is going from your home to somewhere, somewhere way away, and doing it on the twistiest roads you can find. And these bikes you know, offer a couple different ways of doing it. I would say they represent the pinnacle of sport touring. We've got everything from electronic suspension to satellite radio. Th this is how to do it in style, be able to carry a bunch of stuff and go there quickly. But that style costs money, right? Yeah. We have the Concours over there, it's a little bit over $16,000. And then uh, the FJR, it's pushing Pushing 17,000, this one is the ES model with electronic suspension, which is a nice feature to have. And then the Trophy, that's uh, pushing 19 grand, comes with a top box that these other bikes come with, and also electronic suspension. And BMW, of course, has an electronic suspension, and it's got this wicked six-cylinder, 1,649cc motor that we just all love twisting as well. Of. It is magnificent. And objectively, these are all four really, really great motorcycles, and uh, it's a cliche among us when we say I can get along with any, any of the four. The Concours might be the oldest one, and it's kind of egregiously missing cruise control. But a lot, a lot of old school guys get one of those throttle meisters or something, they say it doesn't bother them. So if you can get away with that, the Kawasaki's a great motorcycle too. We rode till 10 o'clock last night, we rode till 9 the night before that, didn't we? They've all got bright headlights. The BMW goes around corners, which is pr pretty cool. If you, if you get caught out after night on a twisty road, then um, it's, it's, it's the most expensive spread. And I think we kind of all agree it's a fight for second after it. Um, yeah, but it's a fight because this bike loaded up with its options is pushing $26,000. So it, it starts at 21, comes with a lot of good stuff at 21, but as equipped, $26,000. And maybe that puts it outside your sport touring budget, which we can understand. And if that's outside your range, these other three offer a lot of value too. I think looking for the bargain bike of this bunch, you're looking at the Triumph right here. Not only do you get the heated grips and heated seat, but you get the best uh, protection and its fairing. You've got an electronics package. It comes with a AM FM radio. You can Bluetooth uh, your, your phone and headset to it. You know, cruise control. It also comes with the top box back here. None of the other bikes do. So really, it actually comes more loaded than the BMW for a lot less money. The biggest difference going to be that has three more cylinders than this bike. <laughs> yeah. I think that one of my issues with the Triumph is, it, I think it's treading a little closer to touring motorcycle as opposed to sport touring. I think the emphasis is a little bit closer to touring than I would prefer. I mean, it does, it's great, but I just feel that I would like it to be a little bit more on the sporty side. If there is a luxury touring motorcycle of this group, it's definitely the Triumph. The Triumph, the best wind protection, like Tom says, it's really comfortable and the, the extra luggage is really nice if you're throwing your significant other on back. So that's kind of what I was talking about. It's gonna, gonna, gonna wind up being kind of a subjective deal because I'm really a fan of the way the Triumph goes around corners too. For, for some reason, it fits me. Kind of the, the BMW and the Triumph both, both have, have ergonomics to kind of bring the bars back a little bit more closer to you. I just feel really in control of that Triumph and feel like I can feel the front tire on it better than any of the other bikes here, even, even though it's, it's not the lightest. And even though it's got like 100, not 100 pounds, but it's got 40 or 50 pounds of your stuff in that box on the back, and it still goes around corners is better than any of the other bikes to me. And I'm a big fan of the six cylinder in the BMW, but to me, the Triumph's the second best. It's got that, that triple howl we always talk about and it seems like it makes really fat and fat mid-range power and 
I've lived with the FJR for a couple months, and the more I ride it, the, the more I like it. I mean, you all talked about how you, you don't like the bars being as narrow um, on these big heavy bikes, and it, I, I absolutely love it. I feel like it's the one that I can put where I want in a corner uh, with no muss, no fuss. And I, I think it comes down to ergonomics, a compromise between being able to sit up and go a long, long way, and then being able to lean forward a little and get a lot more aggressive with it. Like uh, some of those roads we were riding the other day, they were gnarled messed up chunked pieces of asphalt been her road 150 pound heavier bmw with this much wider bars in the corner you could just kind of like oh big pothole Whoop, i think i'll pick it up and move over here no problem but speaking about steering my, my biggest problem with the kawasaki even worse than not having cruise control on a sport touring bike is that thing is very reluctant to steer like surprisingly so if you just jumped off that and the bmw you'd think the bmw was 50 pounds lighter than the kawasaki because it just doesn't steer really quick it, it flickable is not in its vocabulary and i think part of the reason is that 190 50 series tire on the back it's flat and it doesn't like to roll in the corners and so that, that's my biggest problem with the Kawasaki. Kawasaki is the second shortest bike here by one tenth of an inch. It's six inches shorter or shorter than the BMW, yet the BMW steers quicker. Yep. Well, let's also, outside of just the performance of these bikes, let's talk about the electronics. Okay, outside the Kawasaki not having much electronics, you know, we have these three bikes, right? So you've got a whole bunch of stuff up here on the handlebars that you have to learn how to manipulate. <laughs> and I think we could probably all agree that BMW knows how to do this the best as far as being a easy to learn, intuitive type of operation. So it's by far been the Triumph to me, yeah, which yeah. is kind of inscrutable. What's TTC mode? My biggest complaint about the BMW was the amount of effort it took to do the thumb wheel versus <laughs> I couldn't find stuff on the Triumph. Yeah, you know, BMW has really done a good job if that's what I'm complaining about. Yeah, that wonder wheel is terrific for navigating through your, uh, for your di different menus. It's, it, it's fairly intuitive and considering how many different options there are to be able to get through them with the buttons and that, uh, that wheel, it's, it's really a nicely engineered system. But this bike is the heaviest one by a significant margin. Uh, it, it doesn't handle like that, but it is a bigger machine. And for some of you, if you're sport touring and you're going to be pulling off in a gravel turnout, you may not like to be doing it on this and the RT might be a better choice and some of these other bikes here might be a better choice too. The, the FJR, I was saying earlier, if I had to do the MSF course on any of these bikes, it would be the FJR by far for me to navigate a cone course or something. Well, I think John hit on something about, you know, take, getting down to the dealership, taking these for a test ride. Because I think once somebody, the right gearhead motor person, took this for a ride and that and the other one for a ride and then jumped on the BMW, felt the engine, heard the noise and just went, oh my God, yeah, I can, I can justify spending $7,000 more on this bike because of how cool that motor is. Or 10,000 more in the, the case of a couple of these bikes. Also, at the same time, each of these engines have such a different character. I mean, last night, we were talking about the difference in the vibration between the Triumph and the Yamaha, um, because the Triumph has that triple vibration, and while the amplitude may be the same as Yamaha, it's at a lower frequency, so it isn't as noticeable. In fact, you could say it's soothing. It's soothing, yeah. <laughs> All come with hard bags. We know this guy's got the top box. I hate to go back to the BMW, but it has the nicest bags as far as the operation. You just go back here, hit a button, pull the latch, opens. You got an electronic lock on there. And then you got a key fob. You're walking away from the bike, deep, and it locks the bags. And all the other bikes, you got to pull the key out, put it in there just to get in a bag. It seems like an extra move that you shouldn't need to. You should be able to keep them unlocked if you want to, but they all require a key. The brakes on all these bikes rocked. I think, well, I think we only have one complaint, yes. and Kevin, uh, Kevin's itching to say it. The, the Kawasaki, we, we, we t in our last sport touring shootout, when you're coming into a corner and you're trail braking and you add a little bit of rear brake, it proportions some of that pressure to the front brakes and it really makes the bike pitch forward. And it's not uh, expected. The Yamaha's brakes are also linked, but they feel like natural. They don't feel linked, and the, the Kawasaki's, it's not that great a feel, I don't think, out of the front end. And then if you add the rear brake in there, it, it kind of upsets the chassis. And we think Kawasaki should uh, try to re-engineer that. Yeah, so what, what it's going to be uh, for a sport touring bike for you, it kind of depends on what you want from a sport touring bike. There's a, quite a range here. And really, we liked riding all these bikes. The last one, the last pick, it was still a great bike to, to ride. 
So cost is gonna be important. We all love the BMW. If, it was, if we were given bikes for free, I think we'd all choose the BMW, but to come up with $25,000, $26,000, that's a big bill to pay. And there's a lot of sport touring pleasure to be had without spending that much money too. Yeah, what we're gonna have to do as always is go back to the office, really, you know, look at the notes, talk to Silver some more, break out the old score card where we input, you know, the pricing and the weight and all that stuff and tally the numbers and that's kind of gonna, you know, tell us which bike really won this contest. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you gotta go to motorcycle.com, get all the details. There's a lot to talk about on these bikes. And in the meantime, we'll be trying to dig BMW to get the RT back to us so we can figure out how that one fits in with the sport touring elite.